Welcome everyone to episode 41 of the Missing Pieces podcast. If this is your first time watching or listening, as this is available everywhere that podcasts are available. My name's Greg, and this is where I sit down and I discuss my life, Lego, and anything else that's on my mind that week. And I wanna thank you for taking time out of your week to be here with me. You could be doing anything right now, and I hope that you are, because this is mainly an audio presentation, but you could be anywhere doing anything, and you're here with me, and we're talking about a lot of stuff. I got some topics to discuss this week, but before we get into that, I've got some thank yous to give out to our new patrons. First of all, I'd like to thank Yan. I think it's Yan. Yan or Yan, Y-A-N-N. Thank you for becoming a patron this week. And I also want to thank JP Games. That one's a little bit easier for me to say. And he sent me a message and, and, and told me how much he appreciates our stuff. And I appreciate that, JP. Thank you for coming over. I've got a lot of non-Lego stuff to discuss this week, but I figure there's probably some people out there that come here just for the Lego. So let's start with that first. We're gonna talk about the new Lego theme that was announced this week that I'm actually excited about. I don't know about you, but Lego art is becoming a thing. And I have Lego's website up here and I'm gonna read their description of this because I think they can do a lot better job than I can. Lego art, discover the pleasure of a different Lego building experience. I'm already intrigued. Celebrate some of the world's most iconic artists, bands, and characters with these unique Lego art sets. Create wall art to display with three or four building options in each set so you can choose your favorite. While building, immerse yourself in the soundtrack with stories closely linked to the piece. If you're up for more, two of the sets offer a bigger building challenge and an ultimate art piece to display. Oh my God. Hopefully you guys saw these. I don't have anything up on the screen right now, but if you go to uh, lego.com and do a search for art or go to themes and art, you can see what these look like. I guess before I tell you about the different options and themes that they have going on here within Lego art, let me explain what it is for anyone that hasn't seen these or if you don't have the ability to look it up right now. Essentially what these are are mosaics. It's a, it's a frame with either studs or circular tiles put on there and arranged in various colors to the point that while up close it may not seem like anything, when you back up it becomes an image. And the first one that they have on here is Andy Warhol's Marilyn Monroe, which I think looks good, but for me, I don't really have that connection. I do think there's probably a market for this, especially for art people. But for me, this one is, is the least appealing of the bunch. After that, I know a lot of people are going to be into this one. We've got Iron Man. And you can do three different images with this. The first one is Iron Man looking one direction. The other one is Iron Man kind of positioned differently looking the other direction. So both Iron Man's faces. And then you have the Hulkbuster as one as well. And I think that one's going to be hit for people that I don't know if I would do all three in this case. I will talk about one that I'm considering doing all three, but two of these are, are just too similar for me to consider. But if you put the three together, you can make this really epic Iron Man pose where he has his arm out and it looks really cool. So there could be a reason to get all three of those other than the fact that they're $120 a piece. So this is kind of an expensive thing. Lego's kind of going for the older audience and I'm seeing them doing a lot of that lately. And I like that because I'm in that demographic, but I still feel like they do a lot for kids. They're not ignoring or, or abandoning the, the younger crowd, as you can probably tell if you look at the other Marvel sets that are coming out this year. But this is like really awesome for your wall. And speaking of awesome for your wall, the next one, oh my gosh, the Sith, Star Wars the Sith. So you have a couple options here. You can build, and again, this is one set. You can build three different things, not at the same time, but you can make a decision on that. And you're probably gonna wanna choose wisely because I feel like once you get one of these things built and you got all the studs in there, you're probably never gonna wanna take it apart. So this one, you can do Darth Maul, you can do Darth Vader, or you can do Kyle Ren. Oh my gosh. I was almost gonna say Carl Ren, and then I was gonna say Kylo and it just came out Kyle. So Kyle Ren is the third one you can do. Being a Star, a Star Wars detector triggerer has its disadvantages. It troubles me to say Darth Vader. I wanna say Dark Vader. And I can't, I can no longer say anything other than Carl or Kyle Ren. But these are epic. Like this is, if I'm getting this, and again, it's $120 coming September 1st, supposedly. I don't trust Lego anymore with their release dates, but. $120, it makes a great art piece. And I, for me, and this may be the unpopular opinion, but I think that the Darth Maul one is the best one. I think it just looks menacing. It's basically him with his, his crazy evil looking face and the lightsabers kind of up on the side. But this may be one that you want to get all three of if you're a Star Wars detector, because the, the piece that it makes when you combine three together is amazing looking. It's Darth Vader. It's a, a th it's three high. So it's more of a, uh, a vertical piece than it is horizontal. And he's standing there with his lightsaber off the side and the glow off of it looks amazing. 
And I'm like really tempted into this as a piece for the studio here. It'd be $360 to get all three of them, but simply just to make that Darth Vader combination one, I think would be amazing. So I'm, I'm like really in on that. I don't know what the general consensus is on these things. I typically don't really watch the Lego news videos anymore. I, I've, I've kind of gotten away from that. So I, I, I feel like that's a good and bad thing. I feel like maybe I'm less informed on things because I, I don't know what the, the feel is for people, but it also helps me form my own opinion. Cause I notice a lot of times when you go into like a Lego news video, if that, that news presenter has a negative opinion of something, I notice a lot of that happening in the comments as well. And I don't know if that's just because everyone kind of agrees or if it's like, oh, if he doesn't like it, I don't like it. It's hard to say, but I like to form my own opinion. So I just look at the images of these and dude, I, I think they look sweet even at $120. If you're wondering though, there is one other one and this may be for a little bit of the older crowd, but there's the Beatles. And I think this one is gonna sell like crazy, not only because it's the Beatles, which is uh, still huge to this day, but because you get all the members of the band. So you get John, Ringo, George, Paul, got it. You can get all those. And I feel like people, what they're gonna do with these, the Beatles enthusiasts that may not even be into Lego, they're either gonna get their favorite person, like you're probably gonna get Paul or John most likely, or you're going to get all four. It's either going to be one or all of them. In this case, there's four of those. So if you went all in on these, you're talking about, what, $480? Did I do my mathletics on that? Yeah, $480 for these four Beatles pictures on the wall made of Lego. That's a tough pill to swallow, but I imagine there's probably some really hardcore enthusiasts out there that just love the Beatles that would be totally on with this, especially if you're into Lego and Beatles, of course. But man, if you're if you want to talk about just getting something framed on the wall that has a picture of the Beatles, you could you could do a lot cheaper, but you don't get to build it. You don't get the soundtrack, which in this case I think having Beatles songs, which they'd have to license, would be really ideal. But to have interviews and the behind the scenes and stuff, I think could be kind of neat. I'm not really into that. I don't I don't think if I get the the Star Wars one and I build Darth Maul, I don't think I'll sit down and listen to that. I'll probably be listening to a podcast or watching YouTube videos or be on a live stream when I do it. Another thing about this, as a creator, if you like to make videos or thinking about it, making a time lapse of one of these could be amazing. Like you start at the bottom and start working your way across. The way that would turn out if you really uh, sped that footage up, Oh my gosh, it would look so rewarding and satisfying to see that. So there's a lot to this. I feel like I can justify the cost of, of 120 to do the Darth Maul. Can I do 360 to get the, the Darth Vader piece? I don't know, dude, it's, it's a lot. I mean, especially when I could throw a little more money, like if we're already going that far in, I could throw a little more money at it and just get the Darth Maul bust. And like, that's, that's my number one thing that I want in Lego right now. That's like $500, so maybe that's like a better buy. I'm curious to see what you guys think. I'm definitely gonna be doing some viewer or listener feedback next week on this particular topic. I'm curious to see what you guys think about these things. Are they a giant waste of money? Are they overpriced? Is it lame? I feel like there's gonna be a lot of different opinions on this based on maybe your age or maybe not. I don't know. Is anyone getting the Marilyn Monroe one? The more I look at it, like I love the colors of it. It, for I think these are like three, let me see how many pieces that is. It's like 3,000 pieces, I think. Let me take a look at Marilyn Monroe. So she is 3,341 pieces for 120 bucks. If you're trying to beef up your circular tile collection, which that one is, and I think that works really great for the, the pop art style that Andy Warhol did. Maybe, maybe it's worth it. Maybe it's just worth it for the pieces. I don't know. But yeah, I think they're cool. I'm, I'm kind of excited about this theme. I love it when Lego does something different. Not different like, hey, let's make hidden side sets and put the the technology into it, which maybe is a hit with some people. Again, you can let me know on that. But for me, with those, I was just like, I just like the sets, I'm gonna build them. We did the AR thing or whatever once, and that was it. But I applaud them for trying new things. I think in the, the market we're in today where technology is moving so fast and people are always on to the next thing, I think it's good that Lego tries to bring in something that, that hasn't been done before or seen and maybe to attract new audiences or these ones, especially for, for older people that maybe got out of Lego years and years ago, but you just love yourself some Beatles and you're like, wow, that really takes me back to my childhood. I need to get that. And then you're like $480, I'm out. I don't know, it's a lot, but I think it's cool and I'm excited uh, about trying these out. We'll see if they come out September 1st. I would love for Lego being that these are $120. Lego, if you wanna just, 
please throw out a promo for spending $99 or more. That would just make me so happy. It would bring so much happiness to my heart and would make my decision a lot easier on that. Um, but we'll start with one and we'll see where we go from there. Oh, I just thought though, if I build Darth Maul, I'm going to have to tear it apart to build the three. I think I'm just going to go with one. I'm going to do the Darth Maul. Let's go on to... I, I, this, this topic is actually really good. This was some viewer feedback that I saw when I posted last week's video. There was a question about adding timestamps to the video. Say you have a video that's, they think it was the comment was, uh, is there any way that we could add timestamps to these longer videos that are 40 or 50 minutes long in some cases? And I think that'd be pretty cool. And immediately though, like my initial reaction was like, wait, you don't want to watch the whole thing? I'm, I'm hurt, but I understand like people have lives and it's like, dang, that's a 50 minute video. I just want to hear the one part where he talks about if he likes Marilyn Monroe, uh, Lego art or not. And yeah, maybe that, maybe that would be a good idea. But for, for me, I'd have to go back and watch this. And to be completely honest with you, this has been a topic that I've wanted to talk about for a while. When I watch these videos back and sometimes because I have to edit like little clips and out and I try to like, you know, I have to reset my camera and try to make this work cohesively. I just, I don't know how I feel about this podcast. I feel like I spend so much time talking about myself in this and I guess that's what I what I like about this because it's like my journal, but I feel like it's so self-indulgent and I feel like almost like a shame about putting this out there. I'm like, how do you feel so bold that you can talk about your life for 30 minutes and think that someone's gonna wanna sit and through that and listen to that? I don't know, like it makes me kind of cringe. So I don't wanna go back through. It's not a laziness thing because I could certainly do that. Uh, it's just, I don't know. I just kind of want to sit here and put this out and then I get I get nice feedback on it, which I really appreciate. But myself personally, I, I can't do it. As much as if someone else was doing this, like Brixar with his podcast, I love it when he does his. And I love, there's another podcast I listen to that it's just an audio format only that it's kind of the guy just talking about like his, his successes, failures, things that's going on in his life, movies that he watches, sort of like what I do here. And I really love that. I like a personal thing like this. Some people maybe come in just for the information and maybe that's what the, the timestamp comment refers to. Like, hey, I just want to know about the, the time when you talk about this very particular thing. But for me, missing pieces is sort of like, uh, it's an entire experience. It's like, uh, you know, j just just buckle in and who knows where we're going, but we're probably going to go somewhere. We might, we might spin out for a bit, but we're going to go somewhere. And uh, if anyone wants to put timestamps into the um, into the comments. I'd be happy to pin that comment so other people can come through and, and click on the things that they're interested in talking about. Good luck making them, though, because it's not like I, I very much have like predefined things, although I sort of do. So this far, if you're trying to follow along, we've talked, we've, we've gave our Patreon thank yous, which I don't think that would be necessary to have as a timestamp. But uh, we talked about the new Lego art theme. Now we've talked about timestamps. Timestamp a timestamp. <laughs> inception level of podcasting here. Now we're going to talk about missing topics and missing pieces. I ended last week's episode forgetting to talk about an entire topic that I wanted to discuss. It was kind of my fault because I have the little notes app on my iPhone. And each day I kind of like, oh, this kind of thing happened today. I want to talk about this coming weekend. And I, I sit down and do that. And sometimes I forget to write things down, like things that seem so valid and so like awesome at the time. You kind of just, you, you do that and appreciate it. And then you move on. And like two days later, it's like, that, oh, that happened last Tuesday. But I want to talk about the time that we took Clark Man. It was just a week ago. The video is going to be coming out maybe in like two days on Greg's World because I have a bit of a backlog of videos there. But we took Clark Man hiking at one of our favorite hiking places here in Pennsylvania. It's called Ricketts Glen. It's in Benton, Pennsylvania. And if you want to see what this is like, we have a couple of videos up on Greg's World already of us hiking there in the past. But it's an incredible place where there's a, essentially it's a loop. It's a 3.2 mile loop where you start kind of at the top of this, uh, almost top of a mountain, and you walk down around, I'm making motions with my hands, if you're listening to this, it's not helping, but as you walk around this loop, there's water that flows through and waterfalls everywhere. I forget how many waterfalls there are, but they're incredible, and you kind of walk down, they have all these epic like natural trails and with like stone steps and things, and you walk down, you can admire the waterfalls, people go down there, it's a great place to take photos if you're into the Instagram and all that stuff, but you can you can view these waterfalls, go on the hike, you walk down to basically the bottom and then walk back up and you see more waterfalls. So no matter where you're walking, there are waterfalls to be seen. And Cody and I, or Mrs. Brickitect, as she is known in some circles, we've done this many times before. We go a couple times a year. And this year, we thought it'd be fun to take Clark Man with us. And we weren't sure how it would go because 
oftentimes like we walk just on the rail trail, which essentially is a, a very flat path where they've taken out old railroads and just made it like a bike trail or like a walking path. He gets bored, I guess, or tired, and he wants to go back after like a mile. So I was like, okay, this is 3.2 miles. This is some pretty, pretty, um, I don't want to say like heavy hiking, but you know, you're climbing up steep stairs and down and stuff. And it's a little, a little dangerous, especially when you're only, you know, three or four feet tall and you're 40 pounds or whatever. But we took Clark with us and it was amazing. He did such an amazing job walking on this trail, climbing up things that are like bigger than him. I think the idea of him being able to like jump on rocks and skip and do all these different things kept him really engaged. And the fact that we're going to like a destination, which like this loop, as I mentioned, goes around, it was something that really kept him interested. And he did such a great job. The only time that he went down was at the very beginning, he decided he was gonna start running and then jumping on these rocks. And this is before we even get into the like the actual hike. Like this is just the trail that leads to it. And he fell and like skinned up his knee, but he was a trooper, made it through that. And we hiked all around this thing, had a great time. We came back, had some lunch. It was such a good experience. It was, it was a beautiful sunny day. There was no humidity. There was a, some other people on the trail, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't too busy. I like to go in the middle of the week. I don't recommend going on a weekend if you're thinking about it, but it was good. And then right after that, I was like, as I was finished up on the trail, I'm like, man, I could really go for some ice cream. And when we got back to the car, we, we punched in, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm dying. Please hold. Perfect camera reset time and a time for drink. We, I was getting really hungry for some ice cream. So when we got back to the car, Cody looked up local ice cream places and we went to this place called, it's called the Robin's Nest or something like that. And it was one of those situations where you can just walk up to the window and order ice cream. And my goodness, they had some amazing ice cream there. I forget what the brand was. And I can't even remember what ice cream I got now. Was it Milky Way? I got like a Milky Way blizzard of sorts. If you guys know uh, Dairy Queen, you probably know that. But it was on a waffle cone. And I made the mistake of ordering a medium. Mrs. Bricktech ordered a small. I ordered a medium. Clark got a small. Cody got coffee, uh, which I was going to get coffee flavored. It's the only type of coffee that I really like other than those Starbucks drinks or whatever. the The ones in the the bottle at the store, the Frappuccinos, I think they are. But I got this Milky Way thing and she gets a small and they hand hers out first and it's like massive. And I'm like, oh no. And they hand mine out. It's, I couldn't finish it. I could not finish this medium ice cream cone. I had to have Mrs. Bricktech and Clark Man help. It was a lot of hand. And that's, I love that. When you, when people over deliver on something, it's really cool, especially when it's food like that. But small, I can just imagine what a large was like. Wow. Any, if I ever go hiking again, I'll do a video of us getting a large ice cream cone there just so you guys can see how big it is. But it was fun. That was just such a good day. Memories I'm going to have. I, of course, recorded video of it, so I'm going to edit that up. And again, that'll be out in a couple days on Greg's World, which is my vlog channel. So if you guys want to go over there, like if you're listening to this weeks, months, years in the future, just look up Clark's first time hiking Ricketts Glen or something like that. And you'll be able to find that video and, and actually see the things that I'm, I'm talking about with the exception of the ice cream thing. I didn't, I didn't film that or anything. That was just us enjoying our time together as a family, which was really cool. So we did that. Um, another thing I want to talk about, I think I might've touched on in a previous episode, but something I want to hit on a little bit further here, because I think it could probably help some people out out there, including myself. I've been doing this thing lately where I've been starting my day with some intentional physical activity. Oftentimes, like before when the weather wasn't as nice as it is now, I would get up and I, I find myself kind of like wasting a lot of time, whether it be just kind of getting on, you know, Reddit or YouTube or whatever, or not doing something that, that gets me going. So I, Clark and I lately, we've been going down to the bike path that's near our house and we'd go for walks or bike rides. We've been riding together now. I saw a dude with this little kid on a bike. And I was like, you know what? I can ride a bike with Clark Man too. So we've been riding bikes together. I play basketball sometimes there, just kind of shooting around. And Clark Man rides his bike around the court and has a good time. I've been really enjoying this, not only because like it's good, you know, to get out a little bit and get a little bit of activity in, but I feel like it starts my day off and I just keep going from there. So like if I get up at like 6.30 in the morning, thanks to Clark, because that's what time he gets up pretty much every day. If we immediately leave and we go to ride bikes or walk or play basketball. When I come home, I don't just kind of, I don't just start messing around. I, just, I get a shower and I get right into to the things that I need to do for the day. And by need to do, I mean the things I want to do, which is like make Lego videos, edit Greg's World stuff, make RC videos, all that stuff. And 
it, I just find that I have more time in the day because of starting my day intentionally. So I was thinking if you're out there and you find like you don't have the time in the day to get the things done that you do, or if you're if you're upset with yourself for kind of like wasting mornings or whatever, try starting your day that way. Even if it's just like walking out your front door, maybe walking around your block or walking down to the road and, and you know, coming back. Where I don't know if you live in a city or rural or what it is, but just try to start something like that and make a plan that when you come back, you're just going to jump right into the things that you want to do. And I bet you that you'll find the time to get things done if you start that way. And maybe if you want to, you can listen to Missing Pieces on your, your phone or whatever while you're doing that thing. And two birds, I won't say the word K-I-L-L because we'll probably get demonetized, but you can, you, can, uh, you can handle two birds with one stone by doing those things. So there you go. There's an idea for you. Maybe you, maybe you already do that, but it could help. And if it does, let me know. Let me know if you start that. Give me an update like a couple weeks from now. And you're like, Greg, that was that was a good idea. And I, this is just from my personal experience. So maybe it'll have no impact on you. But for me, not only is it, I think, helping me get a little more active and maybe control some weight gain that I may have put on over the last year or so. Hashtag dad, dad life. <laughs> but also, you know, just, just being more productive, which are two things that I think are good to work on. I want to talk about next... I want to talk about our camping trip this week. We didn't really go camping. We, we went up to camp or the cabin, which is my in-laws and my, I guess my mother and father-in-law and my brother and sister-in-law. The I think it was Wednesday-ish. Yeah, we went up there Wednesday because it was just a gorgeous day and we had, we had that free. And you may have noticed there wasn't a Brick Tech video that day. This is why. We went up to the cabin there and my nephews were there, which I adore those guys. They moved away to Pittsburgh like two years ago, I don't see him very often. In fact, I don't think I've seen him because of the Chima virus. I didn't. We didn't even get to see each other at Easter. It's been like since Christmas, I think, since we've seen him. So we finally got to, to hang out with them, and it was awesome. Uh, we went for a golf cart ride. They have this this golf cart that they just beat on for years, and it's still running somehow. But we went for a golf cart ride to this place called Otter Run, which is this really cool. Uh, creek setup that I think would be great for RC rock crawling, which is like one of my new pastimes. But we went out there. Clark was in the water. It was a good time. I pretty much filmed like that whole thing too, because I love having opportunities to like capture these moments with my nephews. Like I have videos of them going all the way back to the very beginning, and it's fun seeing these guys grow up and kind of amazing to see who what used to be a seven year old is now a sixteen year old. It's it's nuts. And I, I know that's going to be that with Clark sometimes, so I try to capture as much as I can because I want to remember these moments. But I shot like this completely unedited video. It's like 24 minutes of us just hopping onto the golf cart, going for a ride, going to this place, coming back, talking about whatever they want to talk about. And it was really cool. And that, that'll be, of course, be a video that's coming out too. But for me, that was that was really special having that. And oh, I will have to edit one part out. There, were, Oh God, this is embarrassing. But I, when we got there, Clark wanted to go in the water, of course. And I said, well, he had these swim shorts on, or just these shorts. And I said, well, do you have undies on? And he proceeds to tell me no by pulling his pants down and showing that he doesn't have underwear on. So I have to edit at least one part of that out because, yeah, I don't think anybody needs to see that. But we will edit a few seconds out of that video. But it's kind of just like a long form unedited. It's almost like a live stream of sorts where it's just like this experience. And I'm excited to, to share that and, and to go back and watch it myself again too. After that, we went for a really awesome swim at what we call the Big Hole. Took Roxy Bear along. She got her swimming in again. This time, it really was, it was about the same as last time. She swam for a long time because we not only did that, but we went to this place called the Jumping Rock. And I was shocked, but Clark, man, started jumping off this thing. Like, I went up to it and I was like a little scared. I'm not a big fan of heights, but I was jumping off and it was fun. And Kyle convinced Clark, man, to go up and he was catching Clark. And Clark jumped off of it probably like a dozen times. It was really amazing to see him be that brave at five years old to do something that is that his old man was kind of intimidated by. But yeah, I noticed kids like the sometimes like if you just kind of encourage them and maybe it's a little bit of like the peer pressure or whatever of the, the cousins are doing it, so I'm gonna do it too. It was uh it was neat to see that. So I had that special memory too. I had my GoPro in the water for that one. So we've got some really cool video of that. I find I love how everything I talk about to you guys, I'm like, oh, I got a video of that. Of course I do, because these moments are things like that may never, you know, you don't know when it's going to happen again. It may never happen again. And I just, I want to have that. So we did those two things. We went on a golf cart ride that night 
the 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 parents did. I went with Landon as well, who's my nephew. Kyle and Landon are my nephews. And we went across the creek in the golf cart, which was kind of an experience within itself, over to this other side of the creek that I've never been on before. And there's a couple cabins back there that are kind of just isolated. In fact, to get to these cabins, you have to cross the creek in a vehicle. There's no bridge or anything. And up there are all these feed plots that I've learned about through this experience. Like I knew not a lot about deer, but there's these feed plots made of clover. And apparently it takes a lot to try to get these, these, the pH levels just right in these fields. So this clover grows that draws deer in. And there had to be like 20 or 30 deer up there just eating and stuff. And we pull up and they're all just looking at us like stunned. And we're, we're kind of just sitting there quietly and they're looking at us. And a couple times, like some of them will come closer. Like it's interesting to see the curiosity of these deer. And then uh, occasionally one of them will like snort and apparently snorting in deer. This is, I'm going to probably start going down a YouTube rabbit hole on this. Cause I'm going to start learning all about deer. If they snort. That's like a sign of danger. So then they would like back up and then like they would come up again. Like it was kind of fun just watching them and seeing these animals. And it like, it really made me sad to know that they're probably there only to kind of like get raised up so they can eventually be shot. But the thing is, or hunted or whatever you want to say, but the thing is how different is that than when you go to the grocery store and you buy uh, a pack of hamburger meat or a steak or whatever, it's really no different. In fact, those animals probably lived a much better life than any cow that you've ever eaten at a grocery store. So, you know, I guess to provide them this, this food source and then in exchange one of them, you know, ends up becoming dinner, I guess is a, is a fair trade. I know some people are going to be probably triggered by this, but it's a reality unless you're a vegetarian or vegan, which maybe some of you are that you, you can, you can totally speak out against this, but it was just interesting to see these animals. I've never personally gone hunting. I've never killed a deer. I've certainly eaten my fair share of, of all types of meat. So I'm in no place to say whether it's right or wrong, but it was, it was really cool to see them just kind of out there and be that close to him was really neat. And it, it, it was something that I'm gonna remember and I'm happy to have that experience. There's, oh my God, I wanna live over there though. There's like this cabin is completely isolated. There's no one around, no sound at all. There's no sound of humanity. There's these trails that go up on the mountain that you could go hiking on. I need to somehow secure this place. I can just imagine what that would sell for. It's one of those situations probably where the parents Great, great, great grandparents owned it and then passed it down, passed it down, passed it down. I wish I had some type of ancestor that had an extreme amount of land that's secluded that has like these epic things on it like that. Wouldn't that be nice? I'm going to have to really work hard on YouTube so I can secure my, pl my place in the world like that. Maybe one of these days I'll find some off-grid property. You can come over to Greg's off-grid world where we grow tomatoes. Oh God, we won't go there. But that was a really nice day. We spent the whole day up there. We had a fire that night, fireworks. We had a lovely dinner with the family at the picnic table. It was it was everything that you would want for like a 4th of July celebration. And I was very happy to do that. Next thing I want to talk about, there's another timestamp for you. Here's, here comes another one. I want to talk to you about our new trampoline. You guys know in our old house, we had a trampoline there and we moved. And I was like, I think it'd be easier to buy a new trampoline than to, than to move the old one because you have to disassemble it then reassemble it. And I was just like, oh, I don't want to do that, especially considering that one was kind of a repaired one because one day the wind took it and, like a kite and flew down to the end of our yard and I had to bring it back and do some re repairs on it. And the people that were moving into our old house, they had two kids and I'm, I thought, you know what? They're going to love this. So we'll leave it there. And when we move, I'll get a new one. Little did I know that the Chima virus would happen and everyone would be stuck at home and prices on everything sports related would go through the roof. Like I've looked at basketball hoops because we have a spot in our driveway that already has like the, the post that dug out where I could put a basketball hoop. They've gone up exponentially. I've looked up inflatable pools for Clark man to play in. They're like three times they used to be. You can get an inflatable pool for $150 right now. The, the trampoline that I bought for $250 two years ago, I just bought again for $600 and I was, I was taken back by that, but I was okay with it because we've been looking for a trampoline for like the last two months and haven't been able to buy one. They're just out of stock. Everyone's home right now. They have nowhere to go, nothing to do. And they're like, you know, it'd be really cool. Let's get a trampoline for our backyard. So luckily I got on Dick's Sporting Goods one morning. They had like three of these in stock. And as I'm checking out, there were two in stock 
and I was able to secure it. So I, I think I spent Thursday putting that together in the afternoon, which was a terrible mistake because it was like 90 degrees and I was dying outside. But our trampoline's now built. Clark and I have been jumping on it. Mrs. Bricktech's on it. It's, it's a fantastic time. There's nothing more fun than launching a five-year-old on a trampoline. Like if you get those jumps timed perfectly, you can, you can send them and it's so fun. Clark literally laughs the entire time he's on the trampoline to the point where he's like, there's like a drool coming out of his mouth because he's laughing so hard and it just makes my day. So I'm, I feel like $600 might be pricey, but for me, that is an investment into my family and, and absolutely worth it. So supply and demand, welcome to economics 101 guys. People want things, there's only so many of things, maybe production's down, prices go up. It's what happens and I got a trampoline now and I can walk right out here right now and we could film the rest of this podcast on the trampoline, which I won't, I won't do to you, but I'm excited to have that. Next topic, uh, which we would normally talk about, is uh, movie of the week and video game news or gamer tech news. Haven't done any of that. I haven't watched any movies. I haven't played really any video games this week at all. I did see that Terminator Dark Fate is 99 cents to rent right now. And I think I have money in my Amazon account because I did like Amazon... Uh, delivery day of the week or whatever, where they give you like a promotional credit towards digital goods. I think I could watch that for free. So I might do that. Terminator 2 is my second favorite movie of all time, right behind Home Alone. And I would love to see the newest rendition of that, uh, even though it may not be as good as from what I saw in the reviews. But for 99 cents, I think it's worth two hours of my time. And I got some things to build here, so we could probably do that. RC Adventures of the Week, <laughs> new segment. I got Clark Man a truck another RC truck. And I have a, oh my gosh, I have a truck coming tomorrow as well. We've been going all in on this. I got Clark this short course racing truck called an Arma Sentin Mega 4x4. It's a one-tenth scale. It's pretty big. He loves it. We've taken, we did an unboxing video, we took it out, raced it. We took it up to camp with us. It's been a fantastic time. There'll be videos coming out on that on Greg's World, which again, we have like a 10 day backlog on there. So you haven't even seen us get our drift car yet, which we got last week. I'm getting like a new RC car once a week. Again, kind of an expensive thing, but for me, it's investment in me and my, my son's relationship and something that we love to do together. Probably my favorite hobby, no, no hate to Lego, but I've said this before and I'll say it again. I've built plenty of Lego sets and I've raced plenty of trucks and done whatever, like RCing in general. RCing is more fun than Lego. I'm gonna put that out there, it is, it's more fun. But I like both things. I, this is great for winter time when we can't go outside and do things, but right now is our time. And I fully plan to take advantage of it. Like I'm setting this up in a way that every couple weeks we've got new stuff coming to us to race and explore and to crash and bash and have a great time with. Also, according to my accountant, this would be a business expense as I am solely buying these things for the purpose of reviewing in my videos. We aren't having fun with this at all. This is just for business, for me to have this channel where I, I share our RC collecting journey. IRS, if you're watching, that's the way it is. So I, I do get a like a 30% discount on everything that I buy because of that, because it's coming back to me in, in tax write-offs. So it's not as it's not super expensive, and the videos obviously are in revenue, so everything kind of works out. And if I can make enough money to pay for these trucks by making the videos, if I make nothing else on top of that, I'm totally fine with that because this is what we love to do right now in this chapter of our life. And now that I don't have box life anymore, I've got plenty of space to start storing RC truck bodies. Ha! You gotta fill it up with something, right? I wanna talk next about my idea of the week. I actually had two. There's one idea that I might have shared with you guys already that his, his, it, keeps, it keeps coming back to me and it's in my heart for a long time. And that's to have a, almost like a internet call-in show where I wanna, do, I wanna go live basically and I wanna kind of invite a person at a time to come on with me and just chit chat about whatever. This is kind of a tie-in to my idea about the, the Lego dads podcast, a Lego dad stream or Lego dads and mom stream as I'm probably going to call it. I just have people come on that can, that are well-spoken or whatever. And just want to talk about whatever, like you want to talk about your channel and the thing you're doing there. If you want to like get some people to, to, you know, to come over to you, cause I know how hard it is to get, to get people to find you. And there's a lot of people out there that have Lego channels that I feel like deserve way more subscribers. And I'd love to have them come on and just like talk about whatever. We don't, it doesn't have to be just about your channel. We can talk about Lego art. We can talk about the topical things. We can talk about trampolines. We can talk about anything in the world. But like, I just wanna have people come on and just like go back and forth, just a one-on-one -on -one thing. And then like, you know, however long that lasts, have that person drop out, have another person come in. Almost like a radio call-in show. 
And speaking of radio, what I another idea that I had for this week is I want to start doing the research on creating my dream audio setup here for at my desk. Very much like what I have right now, I want to improve my audio in, in a massive way. I almost create almost like a podcasting setup where I have like an actual mic instead of the mic that's on my camera. I've switched to this microphone. And I think it sounds okay as I've gone back. I switched this because I want that crispy video, but I want decent audio. And when I plug everything into my computer, my computer fan starts humming and it creates a distraction for me in the podcast that I can't tolerate. You probably never even heard it, but for me, I'm just like, so I'm going to look into that. I don't care what the cost is. I want to have a setup where I can come down here, click a button, and I can do some commentary on things like when news happens. I like it to be me just kind of in the corner, like, you know, like pitcher in pitcher, talking about things. All I have to do is hit a button. My camera's set up. It's plugged into the, the computer setup that I have. The audio's there. It's all, Everything sounds and looks crispy, and it takes all the barriers out to streaming. And I could come down and stream something. I can make a video. I could do whatever I want and just make it like super nice like that. So that's a dream of mine that I'm gonna start looking into as well, figure out what that requires and what it's gonna take. There's a website called YouTube that's fantastic for finding stuff like that. And I think I could I could figure out exactly what I need and really make something great. So that's something that I wanna do as well. I think that was pretty much everything that was on my mind this week. So now we're gonna move on to the final segment of Missing Pieces, which is viewer or listener feedback. And we had a lot of great comments from last time and I'd like to share those with you here. The first one is on ideas. I talked about how much I was enjoying the Lego Ideas sets that were that were released, or not released, but revealed last week. And Bionicle Forever had a comment about the idea sets. He says, the reason people are hating on the Lego idea sets is because they decided instead of celebrating the most influential theme, Bionicle, as you could probably suspect based on his name, uh, that, that saved them from bankruptcy. They decided to cash in on the third random sitcom that has little reverence or relevance to Lego. Just imagine, instead of Lego making the Pirates of Barracuda Bay, they instead made a sitcom for young Sheldon. That's the sting that people are feeling. They just weren't the most popular Lego idea sets. I don't mind you not understanding as the whole Bionicle thing was in your dark age though. I do have quite the Bionicle collection from a yard sale that I haven't really done much with, but I can understand that, I really do. Like, we've had friends, we've had the Big Bang Theory, Seinfeld now, uh, I mean, if The Office happened, people would probably be down for that, but it would have been a great opportunity for the Bionicle detectors if that's a thing, which it sounds like there are based on your name. It would have been cool for them to get something that, that they can love and appreciate and kind of like harken back to what may be your childhood. Maybe you have nostalgia for that. And I, that does suck for you. I am I am happy that there is the Lego I, Lego Ideas Home Alone set. Like that's my favorite movie. So like keep that one safe. But if we have to sacrifice Seinfeld, Mrs. Brickatech's favorite show growing up, let's get rid of it. Or the or the typewriter. I mean I like all three of them. But Bionicle would have been pretty cool. I would have probably been in on Bionicle as well. As as I mentioned, I don't have much experience with it other than the collection that I've kept in a, a bin for the last God seven years, six years. I need to get into that thing, but yeah, I'm, I'm sorry that happened for you. And it, it's, it sucks, especially because it's so hard to one, get the 10,000 votes and then to get in the running and then to be that close and then have it fail and have to go back from scratch. That just is such a bummer. So I'm sorry that happened to you. And, uh, and hopefully, hopefully they can make it right in the future if, or, or something. Maybe, I don't know. I don't know. There's a lot of smart people that work at Lego that know a lot more about marketing and what sells and what doesn't than I do. And I'm sure that if they see the the feedback from this and how upset people are based on something else that's happened in the past where people were, were demanding of a certain thing, maybe this could be that thing. Next thing uh, or topic that you guys are commenting on was on box life. This first comment is from Extra Sync who says, I destroyed most of my boxes. I only kept my favorite ones and damn, it felt good. And I'm kind of with you, man. I, I have my boxes just sitting on the floor back there, the Star Wars ones that I did. And I, I, I'm not sad about it. If they weren't on the floor, I'd actually probably feel better because it's like, it's taking up my space. I'm probably gonna hold on to them for a bit, but I think, I, I think I'm at the place where I can just let it go. A couple of them are going to be hard though. Like I was thinking about the Porsche or Porsche box that is just gorgeous and like inside is is amazing and it just feels like this whole experience. But it also has a little bit of water damage, and it's not like I sit down 
every Sunday or whatever, and I'm like, let me just admire this box for a minute. Oh my gosh, look at the artwork on that. Was that copyright 2018? Oh, no, there's none of that. So I think I'm with you on it. I think I can let these go. Uh, Millennium Studios also said, uh, this is more of a joke than anything. He says, when Greg's at the recycling place with all of his boxes around him just crying, everyone would be like, is he okay? I could picture that happening too. Putting those in there is gonna be an experience for me. And when I look into the bottom of the recycling container, like you just shove all the boxes in, and I see all those Lego boxes at the bottom, a part of my soul is gonna be in there with them. But I keep going back to talking about how this isn't sustainable. It's not sustainable to collect the way that I do and keep all these boxes. Just sacrifices have to be made. And I, I, think I'm, I think I'm ready. And I got a lot of encouragement from you guys for giving up on the box life. And I appreciate that. Next comment or a series of comments is on the Jeep life thing. I made a comment last week about how I got this really cute comment from the, I think it was a mother who said that their child is now saying Jeep life every time they pass Jeeps because that's something that Clark and I do. And I thought that was funny because we say a lot of things from channels that we watch and uh, I'm glad that we're getting stuck in other people's heads too. Tracy says, my teenage boys get excited when we see Jeeps and I always say Jeep life when they do. They just stare at me and I smile thinking about you guys. Oh yeah, we got our screen time report boys. Uh, five hours and 30 minutes down 16%. It helps when you're gone for a couple days out camping. Kelly also says, my three year old says Jeep life also. And we say scoot life when he's riding a scooter. It's become a thing. You can have life, everything. Box life, don't do that one. Scoot life, Jeep life. We need some shirts. We need to make some shirts up. Uh, next series of comments are on YouTube rabbit holes. I mentioned about how YouTube started recommending B videos to me and Clark and I started, we watched like an hour of these people uh, euthanizing uh, Africanized dangerous bees. We watched someone harvesting 40 some pounds of honey and how queen bees are born and how they have a colony. Uh, we have a couple recommendations here. Uh, first one is uh, the nerd abides. He says, oh, this is about my bird situation. I also talked about how I, want, I really want a bird and I still do. He says, get a cockatiel. I've been watching bird videos for a while now too. Cocktails can sing, whistle, and talk too. So that's kind of on uh, the bird rabbit hole. Once you start watching bird videos, YouTube's like, oh, this guy likes birds. That's happened to me as well. A cockatiel I'd be interested in. They're really cute, and the fact that they whistle and talk, unlike a conure that's very like super mouthy, could be an option. I kind of like the way conures look better, and I also like the bigger parrots as well. So we'll see. We'll, we'll see what we're going to do. Keith uh, on the YouTube rabbit hole thing says, here's a channel I love to watch. It's called Camera Conspiracies. The guy on it's named Casey. He also has another channel called Vegetable Conspiracies. His dry humor just cracks me up. I can't believe that you talked about this, Keith, because... Ch Camera Conspiracies is my favorite YouTube channel right now. I've been following this guy on his Vegetable Conspiracies, which used to be called Vegetable Police for years, and I just found it randomly because he he's into cameras, as am I. I spend a lot of my time looking at cameras. And he uploaded a video to his Vegetable Police channel where he talks about being a vegan and trying to heal his ulcerative colitis uh, predicament that he has. He made a camera video. I was like, I really like this guy, he's funny. And then I found out he has a whole channel just dedicated to cameras. And what I love about his camera channel is that he is trying to be entertaining in a space where it's all people trying to be informative. And I feel like that is my goal in the Lego space. It's like the same thing. Like I see some of myself in him, he does a really great job, but he, you know, he could talk about a camera and lens and the way that you can talk about a Lego set, but not just be like, oh, this lens is uh, 15 to 45 millimeter and it's F 2.8. No, he makes it fun. He does like these slow motion videos where he crosses the street with these funny faces. He does close up on squirrels. He does like these crazy faces. He has all these funny sayings on his channel uh, about uh, different things. And it's very much like he is basically the camera version of our Lego channel. And that's why I really love it. I love people that can take an entire genre that's super dry and make it something that can be entertaining and fun. And I think that's probably why you enjoy it, Keith. That's why I enjoy it. So if you guys are really into cameras like I am and you love speculating over what's the best vlogging lens and best audio, Camera Conspiracies is my guy. I just, I love the work that he does there and I can't say enough good things about it. I watch, I probably watch more Camera Conspiracy videos consistently than any Lego YouTuber that I watch. And that's, that's saying something. Uh, Tony C has a final follow-up on YouTube rabbit holes. He says, RC Trucks is a YouTube rabbit hole that I now can't get out. I'm with you. I'm on Reddit now looking at RC Trucks as well. And there was this one yesterday that was just absolutely sick. That was, uh, they took the innards of a regular RC vehicle, 
but they made a Lego Technic base for it. So the thing drives just like it would be an RC truck, but it looks like it would be, you could build anything Lego Technic on top of it and it would be super fast. And I'm like, I need to get this guy's, uh, I need to message him or something and find out how to do this or, or buy that off him because I can make some epic Lego RC videos if I can get a proper Lego RC car. Like Lego makes them, but they're super slow. They're super expensive and just not worth, not worth looking into, at least in my experience. But that would be really cool. So, oh, I want to make another mention about Jeep life. I, I just thought of this now that we're talking about trucks and stuff. Uh, Tracy and Kelly both commented on Jeep life and I saw a Jeep this week. We went we went to the, the eye doctor to get our eyes checked. And uh, luckily my eyes stayed the same, didn't get any worse. I do wear contacts. I am getting a new pair of glasses, which maybe I'll bring you guys along with me on, on Greg's World. Um, Cause it's been like four years. I need like a new style. And we went to TJ Maxx after that, which they had no Lego, so don't worry there. But there was this Jeep outside there. It was the Jeep Wrangler Moab edition. It's essentially the Rubicon, which is the, the beefed up one only it has painted fenders and it was all red. It said Moab on the side had black rims, painted top, colored match to the vehicle. And I was just like, that's my Jeep right there. That's it. And I came home and I was like, I wonder what these things run. And that was pretty much the end of it because I found out that they are $51,000. 2019 Jeep Moab, which I don't think they made one this year. $51,000. The website said you could get a Ford Expedition for the same price, which is a lot more vehicle for your value, for your money. And I was like, well, I guess I'll just stick to my Subaru. I have a 2013 Subaru Crosstrek. We bought it brand new, paid it off very early. I've been driving debt-free and uh, free of car payments for uh, years and years now. Haven't put any money in the vehicle. It gets me everywhere I need to go. It's all-wheel drive. Has a hatch that opens up that I can throw RC stuff and trucks and all kinds of stuff in the back. It serves my purposes. I would love to go back into the Jeep life one of these days, but for, for now, it's the most practical thing when you're hauling kids and dogs and, and stuff. But if there ever becomes a Greg that uh, it's just Greg and Mrs. Brickitect, speaking in third person, which is lame, Jeep life, I think is going to make a return. I just really love it. I love Jeeps. So there you go. Side note. Good luck with that timestamp. Anyways, uh, we got a lot of other miscellaneous comments here too, which I'll take you down through. First one is from Custom Art. He says, Greg, do you remember a few episodes back when Missing Pieces first started out? You said that halfway through 2020, if no one got in trouble for a video that is made for kids and the creator market is not made for kids and they do not get in trouble because COPPA, would you do the same? Are you still on that thought? I, I've been thinking about this. We're now in July. The whole COPPA thing started in January where you start marking your videos as made for kids. I haven't heard of one person getting fined or their channel shut down or anything happening at all. I'm considering it. I've been doing the right thing though, like the mail videos. I mark them as made for kids like yesterday's mail video. I marked as made for kids because it's very hard to say that when we're opening up all these toys and stuff and Clark's going crazy, it's hard to say that's not attracting a child audience. Is it made for kids? In my opinion, no. Are kids watching it? Yes. Are adults watching it? Yes. In fact, we have a comment here. I'll, I'll just read this one right now. Uh, this is from Dion who says, hey, Greg, I'm probably your oldest fan. I'm 52 and I've been collecting since I was six. I just started watching your channel and it's awesome. I don't think many 52 year olds independently watch Ryan's toy world or toy reviews or whatever it is. Most times they don't. That's a kid's channel. That's directed solely to kids. This channel, it's a little bit of everything and it's hard to say. I feel like if the FTC or COPPA were to go after someone, they would go after someone that's blatantly violating it. My videos, some are made for kids, some aren't. I just make a, I make a decision on it and I'm like, yeah, Clark's, Clark's train reviews or whatever that I do on Greg's World, it's just him showing off toy trains. Okay, that's fine. Me sitting here with Clark Man building something, highly debatable. I don't think I'm gonna go back and mark them as all not made for kids. I would make a lot more money if I were to do that probably and it would help my channel out. But with Patreon and the things that we've been able to do there, I feel like I can find this balance point. And those those people, those 100 people or whatever that over this last six months have come over and been like, yeah, Greg, I'm gonna support what you're doing. That has helped out tremendously on this channel. Like without that, I, it would be debatable whether I would, I would be able to continue putting the time into this that I do, making videos almost every day on here especially when if you do market as made for kids, it's a death sentence for the, for the video. I do that. I basically make the made for kids videos for you guys. That's like, it's for my community and the people that are on, that are on Patreon, they're the people that subsidize those videos. And for those, for that, for doing that, I, I greatly appreciate that. So I'm still playing by the rules for now. A little scared about the whole thing. Like I don't want to lose my channel. That's my biggest thing. Like forget about the money, whatever. Like if I'm like, making any money from the channel, 
fine. But don't I don't want to lose my community of people and everything that I've I've built up here. I don't want to lose that. And if that means going a while without making any money on videos until Clarky goes to school and it becomes more of a solo operation where I'm sharing the things with you that that I'm doing in the day. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll survive it. We're doing okay. But thank you for that, for that comment. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because that's something that I wanted to touch on. And we, we talked about Dion being our oldest Brickitect member here. If you're older than 52, throw it in the comments. I want to know who is our oldest person that's watching this or listening to this. Next comment comes from Madison. Uh, Greg, can we hear your opinion on Pokemon? I just want to know your thoughts on it. Also, I know you hate non-Lego, but Megan Strux has some Pokemon sets that are actually pretty gorgeous. I have one myself and I hate non-Lego too, but dang, it's actually pretty nice. I somehow miss Pokemon. It was, I, I'm too old for it apparently. Like it, 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 although no one's really too old because it's existed all this time, but it, it wasn't like a thing of my childhood. I grew up without it. I never got into the Pokemon Go craze. Clark and I watched the beginning of the Pokemon Detective Pikachu movie, which we still need to finish. I would, I would entertain getting a Mega Construct set, Pokemon set. They were on clearance at TJ Maxx last time I was there, actually. It wasn't the good ones, though. It wasn't like Pikachu or anything. It was like some dude. I don't know what it was, but... I don't have much experience with Pokemon, so I can't comment on it. I could see Clark Band probably getting into it, but there's so many things to get into. SpongeBob is another one of those things that I somehow missed out on that people want me to get into. Star Wars, Clone Wars, Rebels. I mean, oh, there's so many things. Ninjago. I'm just gonna let Clark Band determine where we go. He's so into Transformers right now that it's it's hard to to find anything else at this point. So that's my thoughts on Pokemon. Next thing, uh, oh. This is great. This is how I want to end these episodes. I, I titled this Inspiration to Leave On. We got a couple really nice messages here. There, There is some, I always try to avoid comments that say like, Greg, love your videos or like that, that boost me up because we just, we don't need any of that. So there's some of that sprinkled in here. So if you can get past that, these this is some inspiration I'd like to leave you guys on. The first comment here is from Rhett Lee. He says, I recently did eight years in the Navy and I just got back into Lego Star Wars and I now find myself getting into idea sets, creator sets, Avenger sets. I'm loving all of them now, LOL. Anyway, I was battling depression and watching your videos and content has truly brightened my days lately. It may not mean much to you and this is probably just another random comment, but if you do read these, thank you for doing what you do. On Sunday, I listened to your podcast for like eight hours and built sets, LOL. Thank you, Greg. Not gonna get emotional, Brett. Nice try, but dude, that makes me so happy. Like this isn't just another comment to me and any comment isn't just another comment to me. That, shoot, oh God, I'm not, <laughs> I can't leave you on inspiration like this. But man, to be a part of your life in a little way that, that can help you be a little bit happier. I say it all the time, it's a freaking honor, man. Thank you for, for your service. Thank you for somehow suddenly across my channel and thanks for putting up with me for eight hours straight while you build Lego sets. That's pretty cool. One last comment here before I completely break down. This is from Zippy Cohen, who says, 4523 in the last episode. He says, I really appreciate the great advice. I'm 17 and physically unwell at the moment, nearly housebound. I'm going to take that advice and try to build up to doing more. I talked about just making little steps and making progress. He says, example, walking slowly on the drive, and I'm hoping in the next couple months I'll be able to go places for an hour or so. Your channel is amazing, and it helps me get through each day stuck at home. Shoot. Great video as usual. Shoot. <laughs> you guys, stop it. Um, thank you so much, Zippy. I wish you the best. You can do it, man. You can do it. Just take one step, walk out the front door, walk down the driveway and walk back. Listen to Missing Pieces while you're doing it. You got my encouragement, man. You got the encouragement of everybody else here. I got in this episode. Thank you guys so much for taking time out of your day to be here with me that once again, my favorite thing that I do every week and I appreciate all you guys leaving me comments and things to talk about. Hope to find you, <laughs> I just gotta end it. Hope to find you guys in the next Missing Pieces.